Probabilistic forecasts are used for everything from predicting tomorrow's weather to generating betting odds on sporting events. The key insight is that instead of pretending to know exactly what is going to happen, the user acknowledges that the future is uncertain. As such, instead of looking at one possible outcome, the technique looks at all possible events and assigns a probability of each one occurring. This approach can be particularly useful when forecasting for our supply chains, as there are many uncertainties and many things we simply don't know. By taking a probabilistic approach, we can capture some of this fuzziness and provide a sharper, more logical reasoning of future events. So that's a lot of words, but what does this actually mean in practice and how does it compare to more classic techniques? Well, if we start by looking at more traditional forecasting, where you make a single statement for the future, what happens is you make a prediction, then you wait and see how far your result differs from what happens in reality. This difference from the real and virtual world is referred to as variance and is often what management ends up getting somewhat irate about when they've bought too much or too little stock. However, the puzzling thing with these classical approaches, which look at one single future, is they don't account for real world uncertainty. And this is where the real gotcha of a probabilistic approach lies. If we look at our prediction for the future, Chances are that we can be fairly accurate in the short term, but as time goes on, we get further away from the truth. And it is these extremes which we should be interested in, as this is where our overstock and stock out scenarios occur. This is one of the big unwritten benefits of probabilistic forecasting, as it provides an entirely new way of looking at the future. Now, as many of you will know, practitioners actually know a fair amount about the future based on their experience. This is why gut feel has been a pretty good way of forecasting for such a long time. For example, if you think about a small mini supermarket that sells bottles of whiskey, we know that their trends are fairly erratic. The store manager will know that they normally sell zero or perhaps one bottle a day. However, if there was a big football match on, or it is Burns night, which your Scottish friends will tell you is super important from a whiskey perspective, then suddenly demand will spike and we may sell up to 10 bottles and above. What this looks like from a probabilistic perspective is a little like this, where we have the most likely probability of selling between zero and two bottles and a subsequent spike around the 10 bottle mark. So the crux of a probabilistic model is this statement of belief it provides, which allows users to sort out the likely uncertainties from the less likely and completely discard things that are completely unbelievable. So to conclude, probabilistic forecasts may sound very intimidating and technical, but chances are if you're a supply chain practitioner, you've already been doing this intuitively for years by revising forecasts up or down based on the risks. And this is exactly what probabilistic forecasts are all about, properly balancing those real world decisions when facing an uncertain future. So that's everything for today. Let us know what you think and if you have any further questions, and we'll see you next time.